Hello and welcome back to the world of psychology. Guys, I have to confess, I really have a somewhat strange hobby. Whenever I have some coins over, like one cent, two cent, five cent, or maybe even 10 cents, I throw them away. I put them on the pavement or I throw them on the ground when I'm shopping in a shopping mall, or maybe I put them on the table in the library. And I do so because I think I can make the world a better place. <laughs> well, okay, I'm daydreaming, but um, in fact, there is some scientific core to that. Because in 1972, Alice Eisen and Paula Levin conducted a study in which they put a dime, so the 10 US cent coin, into the coin return tray of a telephone booth. And what they wanted to find out was whether participants who found the dime would be more helpful in a staged situation when they left the telephone booth. Because right after they left the booth, a confederate of the experimenter seemingly accidentally lost a bunch of papers. So this is the typical Hollywood scenario. The girl loses something like, for example, papers, and then the guy comes over and helps her to collect the papers. What do you think? How many people were actually willing to help? When they found the dime, 14 out of 16 were willing to help, which makes about almost 90%. In the control condition in which the participants had not found a coin in the coin return tray, only one out of 25 participants was willing to help the girl who had lost her papers. So even though it is a really small number of participants, the effect is really gigantic. And that's probably why this study has been cited numerous times. But what many people don't know, um, there is a study that tried to replicate the results from this original study and in fact they couldn't find the effect. So what's going on? To be honest, this replication study is not too impressive because they also just had about 50 participants and there are also some mistakes in the publication like a wrong number of participants for example. So not that convincing and when you conduct the replication it really should be well done because otherwise you discredit other scientists just because your study was poorly conducted. So the big question is are there any other replications and I tried really hard to find any but I only found a study published in 1979 by Bateson and colleagues and they were able to replicate the effect from the original study but again they only had 51 participants and the effect they found was by far not as strong as in the original study. So what can we do with these three really small studies? Well we could merge the participants of these studies and calculate the overall effect. And maybe then we have a more realistic result. And I did so and then it turns out um, that about 30% who did not find the dime, so the participants of the control condition, only about 30% were willing to help. Whereas in the condition in which the participants found the 10 cents, about 65% were willing to help. So maybe next time when you have some coins left over, like one cent coins, two cent coins, I mean, what do you do with those? Yeah, you can give them to anybody, of course. And maybe this makes them more happy and maybe it, it even makes them more helpful. So I like to think that this thing works. On the other hand, the scientist in me tells me well, you should still be skeptic because there was this one study in which they could not replicate the results. So maybe the only one person who becomes more happy and maybe even more helpful 
is me, the one who's throwing away the coins. So, but, well, that's not that bad. No, it's not. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> oh, big laughs, ladies and gentlemen, big laughs. <love. laughs> <laughs>